Hi, this is Scott Hunter, and today I'm on the On.net show with Matt and Luke, and we're going to talk about polyming. Hey, we're back with Matt and Luke, uh, and to talk more about polyming. Um, one of the things, Matt, that I run into is, you know, a couple years ago, we started thinking of building these guides for building more complicated .NET applications, especially cloud-based applications. Uh, so there's an architecture guide called microservices. If you go to dot.net, our website, uh, you can find the guide up there. And we have an app we built called eShop Container, which has some front-end websites, it's got some back-end websites, it's got some microservices, it has a little bit of everything. Um, and it's not too hard to pull the Git repo down uh, and run it locally, but if I want to put that in the cloud, I have to go and either manually build a bunch of stuff in the portal, um, or as I said earlier, I don't know how it would actually build an ARM file to actually express that. But you were telling me off, offline that I could build like an eShop container object. Yeah, so that's one of the things that I think is actually really exciting about Pulumi is, is by doing all of this stuff in a real language like C Sharp, um, I can build these abstractions. So if, if you think about that eShop uh, sample, I'm sure there's a, a lot of commonality and like we have these microservices and, and while the container that they may deploy is different, uh, there's going to be many similarities about them, right? So if, if you can create an abstraction that says, okay, here's what I want a container to look like in my system, right? It, it, it's deployed into AKS in this way, it's got these configurations. Um, being able to build a library out of that and then share it with the entire development team or put it in the sample makes it very easy for people to sort of go spin these things up in a production sort of environment instead of just running it on local machine. So I'm interested, Luke, in, um, in how I could go build one of those abstractions. In so, so you're saying I could actually have like an eShop class yeah. that yeah. explains my entire infrastructure, right. yeah. put that up into a NuGet package, yep. and I would just tell customers in my eShop architecture guide, right. just pull this NuGet package down and run the tech right. to do an up on that. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yep. No, I think that's it's exactly right, and it's one of those core benefits you get from kind of using a programming language, using the .NET ecosystem, all of these tools from C Sharp to, to the .NET runtime to the, the NuGet package manager. You get to bring all these into your infrastructure as well. And I'll show a quick example of some of that. So, you know, um, one example that we have here uh, in the Pulumi examples on GitHub, for example, is um, this is Cosmos DB uh, distributed application. And one of the interesting things about this application is, uh, and I'll just uncomment these lines. Um, uh, is this application, you know, if you look at this, what it's doing in the deployment here, uh, it, it looks actually very simple, right? It's just creating uh, these functions and creating these VM scale sets and then exporting some values out of those things. But internally, what these are actually doing, uh, these functions and VM scale sets, they're doing a ton of work, right, to sort of create a whole bunch of things to deploy a function. And so in this case, I'm, I'm uh, deploying an Azure function, so I'm deploying some code into uh, an Azure function here. And in fact, I'm deploying the code that's just another .NET project right here, right? This is the app I'm going to deploy. Um, but I'm going to deploy that using, you know, uh, all these different uh, capabilities. The other interesting thing is that in this application, what I've done is I've, I've used this new Cosmos app uh, concept that I've created, which is another abstraction, which is a general idea of wrapping a sort of globally distributed application around Cosmos DB. So I'm going to allocate one Cosmos DB, and then I'm going to deploy my .NET app into however many different regions I want to. I globally distribute that app, globally distribute along with its data, and be able to access those things. And so I took what would be very hard topology to create. So maybe this is the kind of thing you guys are doing in that example, but these really interesting complicated topologies in Azure, I'm giving them really simple names, right? I'm giving them a Cosmos app, which abstracts away all the complexity of putting all those pieces together, making that a class. I could put this in NuGet by itself and ship that so people could go and use this Cosmos app uh, class itself. It. Uh, and now all the resources to create that, I mean, you look at all these things. There's a Cosmos account, there's a SQL database, there's a container, traffic manager. There's a whole bunch of these Azure resources that I need to stick together um, to ultimately deploy my app in this globally distributed way. So exactly the kind of thing. Yeah, we would do. just build an eShop right. yep. app. And then uh, from that, in fact, I might actually go talk to my team and see if right. we can actually build an eShop <laughs> app yep. object that we could actually put into yep. a NuGet and, and make it easier to actually try to deploy that thing to the cloud if you right. wanted to. And now it's also, you know, it's a CS proj file, so this is going to be something you have inside you know, Visual Studio. Uh, you can get access to, you can get IntelliSense through this thing, you can understand how it's behaving. Uh, much easier than if there was just a 5,000 line you know, JSON file in the project, right? Oh, yeah, and go change these couple of places right. in that yeah. JSON file to match your subscription. Right, Good exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just being able to use like normal code navigation tools to jump between, this is actually a, a rather large, uh, I think, application if you think about the infrastructure, right? It probably creates on the order of 30-ish resources, yeah. right? And so just being able to jump between 
oh, I saw that Cosmos app. Let me see what what is that right. go into it is uh, is really cool to see sort of some of the power that you get when you when you leverage a, a real language. Yeah, it's exactly right. And you know, and you get the type checking and IntelliSense and all these other things to sort of make it just more productive to work with this thing. You have more confidence as well. Uh, and of course, because it's just code, you can also test it, right? Um, so you know. How often do you test your, uh, you know, your ARM <laughs> templates, right? I mean, a lot of folks really aren't testing these things, right. even though they're super critical parts of, of your deployment. Um, but when it's code, it just feels so much more natural. I can use my existing sort of .NET testing tools, and I can just test that these components are building the stuff I expect them to build. So um, we can bring a lot more of these software engineering capabilities in, not just the ability to create abstractions like the, you know, this class here, but a lot of other tools we can bring into this environment. Awesome. Uh, thanks for showing that, Luke. Um, I want customers to go out and try Polymi.com now. And uh, thanks for uh, joining the On.NET show and see us next time.